Hey guys, Tim here. Welcome back to Polygon Academy, and this is episode three of the ArtStation Challenge series. In this episode, we're going to be diving into my modeling process for the scene and discussing how building things in a modular way can save you a ton of time during the production process. I'm also going to be giving you two important tips that I've learned over the last few years that I find super critical when it comes to dealing with modular kits. I also want to say a huge thanks to everyone who's left questions, comments, and feedback on these videos. It's been super helpful in determining the kind of content I'm going to make next, and uh, it really throws a bit of fuel on the fire in when it comes to sitting down and producing these videos for you guys. Finally, if you're not subscribed, smash that button, because later this week I'm releasing a mini ZBrush tutorial that goes over my techniques and uh, some pointers on sculpting wood. So let's hop over to the computer and get right into it. All right guys, here we are in 3D Studio Max. And uh, I just want to say, it doesn't really matter if you're using Max, Maya, Moto. Uh, these principles that I'm about to teach uh, really are general environment creation um, kind of guidelines, and uh, they work in any 3D program. So it doesn't matter what you're using, uh, just use whatever you like. And uh, just because I'm using Max, you don't have to feel like you need to do the same. So here you can see I have the basic uh, house wall set uh, from my scene. It's only a few major components. I have a door, a four meter wide uh, wall piece, and then a two meter by two meter uh, corner piece. And I built these based on the dimensions of the house that I created for uh, the, the gray box layout in the last video. Um, so looking at the, the overall proportions of the house, I decided I would try and keep the pieces as large as possible. And that's actually the first tip that I would say is uh, try and keep your pieces as large as possible. Um, it just keeps things a lot more manageable and uh, you're not spending time duplicating and moving a thousand little modular pieces, which would actually be the second tip is keep your kits as simple as possible. Uh, if you, when you're designing your environments, um, try and design them in really large chunks because that way you only have to build a few pieces rather than uh, you know, a two meter piece, a four meter piece, a one meter piece uh, to try and like adapt to these like crazily uh, non-uniform layouts. So by using big pieces, you can kind of standardize uh, your kit and that allows you to focus your time and energy into producing, say in this case, one, two, three, four, five, five pieces that can make up an entire uh, village or house set uh, instead of like a thousand different modular pieces, which would mean investing all that time building and snapping things together, in which case I would probably be spending more time in max on the you know, tweaking the grid rather than actually uh, focusing my time producing higher quality art. So as you can see, uh, for the roofs, I created these tile roofs um, like a lot of the people in the challenge are doing. And the way that I am creating these roofs is I built them out of a few pieces. In Max, it doesn't look too impressive. It's pretty, pretty basic geo. Uh, but what I did is I took uh, these three tiles plus a broken version and I sculpted them in ZBrush. And uh, I did a unique unwrap layout for them. And that way I can bake all that nice high detail down to these meshes uh, and then actually build the roof model in 3D. Um, and it gives it a bit more of a chunkier feel because there's actual polygons behind it. And uh, rather than just using tiling textures, um, tiling textures, they're a totally valid way of doing it. Uh, I would just, I chose to go this route because it's a bit more uh, of a different workflow than I normally use. At work, I tend to use a ton of tiling textures and trim sheets. So I really wanted to go all out and practice my sculpting skills and do a lot more like unique assets. Um, so by using this, I'm basically building a 3D tiling texture because I can take these three uh, or four assets and actually distribute them into a, say a four meter by four meter square that would normally be done with a tiling texture. And uh, that way it's, it's basically a, a 3D chunk of geometry that I can quickly duplicate and move into the shape. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's the process that I, I used for creating the roofs. For the walls, what I did is I basically did a similar process where I created this 3D trim sheet. Uh, it tiles, the, the texture itself tiles from left to right. Uh, but basically I sculpted the, the assets in 3D and then brought them back into Max after baking them down. And now I have these 3D trims and I just took these, I broke the, the modular like kit apart and then just shoved the, the wood pieces around on top of my proxy meshes that I had created, like the basic uh, gray box modular set I had blocked out and just took the wood and replaced all the gray pieces with these uh, tiling wood meshes. So you can see it's the same, same set, just reused over and over. 
Uh, and but because I had already baked and unwrapped it and brought it in like this, that means I can just detach it and it already has UVs and everything all laid out perfectly. So as long as I don't uh, go and start, you know, messing with it too much, I can just take those pieces, place them over top of my, my placeholder geometry. And that way I'm quickly just duplicating the same details over and over without having to go and re unwrap and UV the entire, every single like wood trim over and over again. Uh, it's a pretty fast and efficient way of working. I really like it. If I move over here, you can see these brick walls I've created use the exact same uh, workflow. I basically sculpted uh, a bunch of different brick assets in ZBrush, uh, baked them down to low poly meshes, brought them into 3D Studio Max, broke them into their individual objects. Uh, they're all in one texture sheet of a, a unique unwrap. Um, and that way, each brick actually technically gives me six sides to build this wall because I can rotate it, uh, you know, use the top, use the bottom, uh, scale and stretch them a little bit. Uh, for organic things like this, you can usually get away with um, pretty like abusing your meshes quite a bit, scaling them, rotating them, you know, adjust them a little bit to fit here and there. Just it, don't get it, you know, too much stretching, but you can actually get away with quite a bit because when the camera's moving and stuff, if something's a little bit tiny stretched, it's fine, no one will ever notice. So by building my walls like this in a three piece kit, of the corner piece, a four meter long piece, and a uh, just a kind of broken one I can smash through here and there to give the, the illusion that like bricks are falling down. Uh, it allows me to only have to work on three assets rather than placing every single brick individually in Unreal by hand, which is a, a super tedious and not fun process. And uh, here you can see the basic geometry I laid out uh, to help me make sure that everything snapped, just a four meter by two meter cube, and then a two meter by two meter corner cube. And I basically snapped my, all my objects to these, and that way I know they would snap fit, to be, sorry, they would fit together perfectly on the grid. And for this corner piece, I'll just do a quick little breakdown on that. Basically what I did is, if I take off the entire modifier stack, here's the flat piece that I modeled out of all of those, uh, or sorry, that I assembled out of all those roof tiles. I gave it a quick bend and that's how I created my four meter wide modular piece. So to create the corner piece, I just duplicated it. I bent it again because these corner pieces actually curve outwards and upwards, which is a little bit of a, a brain bender, uh, like no pun intended. Um, but yeah, so to get this curve, I wanted to play with it. So I had two bend modifiers. And then finally to get the nice corner shape snapping together, I added a symmetry and rotated the gizmo at 45 degrees, which actually creates a nice uh, perfect corner piece. Uh, the seam is mirrored, but actually it is covered by this prop here, which is basically those tube tiles snapped together and bent. And then I just crash it all through together into the final mesh. So it just goes up into the corner here. I might add some type of cap later on, but again, that's polished stuff. One final tip for working with modular kits. In this case, I know I'm, I'm the only person that's gonna be working with this kit. So I felt free to set up the pivots for the wall and the roof in the exact same place. That way in Unreal, I can just take this wall piece, like control copy, control paste it, go into the content browser, select the roof piece and replace it. And then the roof, the roof will snap exactly into position with zero gaps or anything like that. It's a, it's a nice way to have your kits easily snap together rather than have to, to drag out the, you know, the roof piece and uh, drag it up and down and hopefully snap it in the right place. So because this wall and roof will always be used together most likely, I just kept the pivots in the exact same place. And uh, some people like this, some people don't. But uh, for me, it's a nice little hack to quickly assemble your kits and have them still all functionally work on the grid. If we hop over Unreal, here's the scene as it currently is. I've just taken my moss texture, slapped it on the ground. It's good enough for a placeholder right now. Obviously, I'm gonna go in and add some nice terrain textures later on. But for now, it's just adding to the overall vibe of the scene. I've imported my, uh, my wall models here. Here's the four meter by two meter piece. It's just crashed through the ground. And to be honest, uh, on almost every game I've worked on, there's tons and tons of situations like that where you just take assets, rocks, trees, you actually smash them through the ground and it doesn't have to be stitched com like completely airtight to, to the geometry. Uh, so these walls, yeah, they're built all out of geometry. They're pretty high poly, uh, but to be honest, polygons these days are quite cheap in comparison to using fancier complex shaders. Um, so I felt, you know, it's, it's fine. It's a small condensed scene, so the, the poly count can be a lot higher. 
and uh, in this case, I'm totally cool with it. Plus, Unreal has a really awesome automatic LED system you can use to generate uh, multiple levels of detail for your meshes. So when I zoom out, these meshes are actually going down in polygon count quite a bit. So for the roofs, same thing. Uh, yeah, at this distance, the polygon counts being basically halved. Um, if you saw them in max and were like, oh, holy smokes, the, that's a lot of polygons. Uh, yeah, that's true when it's up close, but at a distance with those automatic LODs, it's totally fine. It's not damaging performance at all. Uh, if this was an actual like game game I was working on, there's a 99% chance that this would be a tiling texture with some vertex blending. Uh, but because I use that workflow uh, for my day job all the time, I felt it would be fun to go and create something that's a bit more higher poly and maybe more like next gen than, uh, than I would normally do. Um, and with all these tools, you can, you know, optimize things for performance later on. So right now I just really want to get a lot of cool art in there. And then if my frame rate starts to take a dip, I'll go in and do an optimization pass at the end. So if I zoom in, you can start to see all these nice chunky details. Uh, you probably won't ever get this close if this was an actual game, unless you know it was like a ninja game. You're going up on the rooftops, in which case it would be a it would be pretty cool. Um, I'm using a Z up shader a buddy gave me that he made. Um, basically, what this does is it projects moss, or you could use for snow or something like that on any faces that are facing upwards in the world. Um, and it's a quick way to add uh, things like moss, snow. Um, you could use it to add I don't know water or something like that running down a rooftop. Um, it's a little bit more expensive in terms of uh, than just straight up vertex blending it on, but uh, it's a small trade-off for quickly adding moss to things, and uh, I think the effect is pretty cool. So, yeah, you can see it. it basically, any faces that are adding facing straight up, it adds this nice little moss blend over top. And there's a slider you can increase and decrease the amount of moss, and uh, I'll probably demo it a little bit more um, in uh, one of the next videos. So, if we quickly run around the scene. You can see it's actually starting to feel like it's starting to come together a little bit. Uh, once I get some proper ground textures in there, that'll be a, a big hit, as well as adding the, the trees in the next step. But uh, just by having a few of these assets in a, in a modular kit, it makes it easy, super easy to and quick to assemble uh, my scene and put, start putting it together and replace a lot of this gray box. So I took like five minutes and started scattering around some of these, the broken brick wall pieces, just to get the intention there and the feeling of that this place is like old and crumbling. Uh, I'll go and replace these with actual prop assets later on, but uh, for me, getting that, that feeling down as quick as possible and, and just reusing everything I can uh, to do that is a really big win early on in the production process that helps build that momentum and that motivation to really carry yourself to the end. So by using a limited asset kit, I now know that I can get away with quite a lot just with three or four key assets, and when I go back to polish them and just re-import those, those, that you know, two, three pieces, It'll update across the world and have a big visual impact. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that look into how I'm building the major components for my scene. And uh, just remember to keep your modular kits simple as possible and use large pieces that allow you to quickly iterate and build out your levels as fast as possible. Just remember to try and focus on the big picture and don't get too lost in the tiny little details that no one's ever gonna notice and uh, you'll be on the right track. Let me know in the comments below if there's any questions you have or anything you want me to expand upon and uh, I'll do my best to get back to you and give you a quick reply. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more game art related content, be sure to subscribe and as always, see you in the next video.